and she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Wow. What a powerful verse. I want to do something a little bit different. I want to, you've probably never heard a Christmas message like this, but I want to center this message really, of course, around Jesus, but I want to approach it in a little bit different way. To my left is a, to my left, come on, help me out. To my left is a, I want to speak to you for the next few moments on this subject, a Christmas tree Christmas. Because when I look at this Christmas tree, there are several things that stand out to me. Did you know that we can learn some spiritual lessons from a Christmas tree? You say, what do you mean? Well, think about it with me. There's some spiritual, scriptural lessons that we can learn from a Christmas tree. What are they? Number one, they being the Christmas tree, they are grounded. They are grounded. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17, the verses are on the screen. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17 so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, watch this, are you ready? Say, I'm ready. And that you, what does it say? Being rooted and grounded in love. You see, the tree is grounded. The, of course, this is a fake tree, right? Come on, all right? But a real tree would have something under the ground, and that is called Roots. In a very real sense, when I say that the tree is grounded, this speaks of our personal salvation because without the roots, there's no life. Without the roots, there's absolutely no life. And so the tree reminds us that the roots represent being grounded and grounded represents having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So you see, they're grounded, but number two, a tree is green. Madison went out this year and bought a tree, my daughter, who leads worship. And I was going to use her tree so we wouldn't have to go buy a tree, but her tree was black. <laughs> Did you know that you could buy a black tree? But most trees are green. She heard her name, didn't she? Here she comes. And so... The tree is green. You know, the pine, the fir, the spruce, the cedar, all are members of the evergreen family. They're all green. What does this speak of? To me, this speaks of life. Life. You know, evergreens go through different seasons. It's dry. It's cold. It's hot. Guess what? They stay green. It speaks of life. Look what the Bible says in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says, and you are dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Verse 3. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, wrath even as the rest. Look in verse 4. God, but God. Everybody say, but God. But God. <laughs> Boy, that's a powerful phrase. But God. You see, before, before I gave my life to Jesus, I was spiritually dead. Everybody who's born of woman, they are born spiritually dead. And the only way that you can come alive and become green and have life is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. But God, but God, but God, the only way we're going to have life, the only way we're going to have life is but God, but God, say it with me, but God, say it again, but God, but God being rich in mercy, hallelujah for his mercy. Because of his great love, we've been singing about his love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, that is, we were dead because of sin in our lives. He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. You see, the tree is grounded. It speaks of our salvation. The tree is green. It speaks of life that we have in Christ. John 10.10, 10, he came to give life and to give life more abundantly. We live in a day-to-day -day where everybody's trying to find happiness. Everybody's trying to find joy. Everybody's trying to find contentment. And so many people, come on, you know this because some of you have been there. Some of you are there right now. 
But so many tried in the bottle and they tried in the pill, whether it's prescribed or off the street corner or downtown Jackson or somewhere else. They're trying to find this, this fulfillment through, through sex or through pornography or through drugs or through alcohol or through some relationship. Or if they can just get enough money, if I can just make enough, then I'll be happy. You want life and life abundant? It's all in Jesus. Jesus, the tree is grounded, the tree. Is green, the tree, they glow. Child of God, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16 says this, Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. We ought to, we ought to be a shining light to the world, shouldn't we? Some of us have already been to our family's house. Some of you are going tomorrow. And some of you are looking forward to it and some of you are not. How many of you got some cray-crays in your family? Come on, be honest. How many of you are the cray-cray? Oh, you kept your head. You're the cray-cray. All right, we got some crazies in our families. But when we go to our family's house, we can shine, be a shining light, the light of Jesus, right? We can be a shining light. You know when Moses went up on the mountainside and God was calling him through a burning bush, when he left there, he came down out of that mountain. He looked a lot different than he did before he went up. His face was glowing. It was the holiness of God. It was, it was, it was the fire of God. It was, it was God who had lit him on fire. Friend, listen, when we go out in the world, God said that you are light, you are light, you're to glow. Matthew 16, 15 says this, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In other words, hey, go into the world and light it up, man. If you have Christ in your life, go into the world and light it up. The tree is grounded. The tree is green. The tree glows, but also the tree has garnishings on it. Garnishings. I remember when I was a kid. Remember when you were a kid after Thanksgiving, you always put the tree up, you know. And if you're old like I am, you, you did stuff like pop popcorn and run string through it. Hello, come on. All the old people, raise your hand. You know what I'm talking about. The fun stuff, right? We made our ornaments, you know. I mean, we put popcorn on the tree. What else? Somebody holler it out. What'd you put on it? Cranberries. Cranberries. You are old, man. Amen. <laughs> Somebody else, what'd you put on your tree? Pine cones. Yeah, I mean, that's back in the day, and we put all of these garnishings on the tree. Galatians 5.22. I believe this is speaking of the fruit of the Spirit in life, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You see, the tree is grounded. It's green. The tree, is, it glows. It has garnishings. But last but not least, the tree, watch this, the tree has gifts under it. That's the favorite part, right? Come on, amen? amen. Get to open the presents. Let me tell you something. God gives us gifts, doesn't he? God gives us gifts, doesn't he? He gives us the gift of salvation. And all you got to do is unwrap it. All you got to do is open it up. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, you, me, whoever, whosoever, red, yellow, black, and white, they're all precious in His sight. Whosoever. The good, the bad, the ugly. Amen. Whosoever. Salvation. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. He's offering salvation. He's offering forgiveness 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Listen, some of us, some of us have sinned against God. And we think God can never forgive us. Let me tell you something, friend. This is a gift from God. God says, if you'll just come to me and you'll acknowledge the sin and you'll confess it, you'll say to God, hey, God, this is wrong. God said, I will forgive it. I'll cast it as far as the east is from the west. And some of you need to hear that tonight. God's here to forgive you. God's here to give you salvation. God's here to give you a special gift. Maybe it's, maybe it's rest. Some of you are tired. Who's tired in the house? Some of you are just tired. Some of you are tired. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Come to me, all you are weary and tired and wore out and weighed down. I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. God says, here's your gift. The gift of salvation, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of rest, the gift of a future. 
Man, some people are just so hopeless today. Maybe you're hopeless because of the life that you have, been, you have lived and the circumstances that have come your way. And sometimes you just think, man, how in the world am I going to move on? Is there a future for me? Let me tell you, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. Listen, friend, there's hope in Jesus. There's a future in Jesus. There's a future in Jesus. There's a future in Jesus. Let me ask you something. Are you here tonight? And you're here tonight and you're beginning to wonder, is this God thing something for me? Is, is this Jesus thing that we're talking about? Is this love that we sing? Does it apply to me? Can I, can I really be saved from my sins? Can I, can I be forgiven of my sins can I rest in Christ? I'm so tired. I'm so wore out. I'm so weighed down with life and circumstances and sin. Is this for me? Is this for me? Can I have a future? Is there a future for me? Some people are so hopeless because of things that have happened in their life in the past that they think there's no future for them. Let me tell you something. Friend, listen to me. There is future in Jesus he loves you yeah he loves you he loves you he loves you he loves you he wants you to know him here at Soul Quest we don't we don't talk about religion it's not about religion it's about a relationship with God and it's for anybody and everybody who's simply willing to come to Jesus to accept his free gift to open it up to open it up and say yes thank you Jesus he's waiting on you he's already given it 2,000 years ago Jesus Christ Matthew 121 2,000 years ago Jesus gave his son Jesus came God gave his son for us so we could have life. So we could be saved. So we could have forgiveness. So we could rest in Him. So that we can have a future. Do you know Jesus? Do you know Him? Do you know Him? Do you know Him? If you don't know Him, tonight can be the greatest night of your life. I close with this. In 1983, I was minding my own business. Somebody invited me to come to a rally on a Saturday night I was sitting second or third row back and I began to hear a message of hope a message of love I was headed in the wrong direction I'm telling you I was already getting plugged into the world and I'd already learned how to drink and picked up the bottle and the bottle was taking over my life and, but that night I heard something I heard a message that God loved you Ronnie that you got a problem, Ronnie. That problem is sin. He, he didn't have to tell me. I knew that. But he said, hey, God's got a remedy for your sin. That remedy is found in his son, Jesus. But you've got to respond. John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons, the daughters, the children of God. He said, you've got to respond. You've got to accept this free gift. You've got to open up the present. You've got to say yes to God. At the conclusion of that service, about where we are right now in the service, I got out of my seat and I came and knelt at an old-fashioned altar and I said, Jesus, I can't do this thing on my own. I need you. I need your love. If you can forgive me, please forgive me. If you can save me, please save me. If you can change me and give me a future, God, give me a future. Let me tell you what happened that night. God became... Not just a God in heaven, not just a big creator of the world, but he became my personal savior. He can become your personal savior tonight too. He can be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He can forgive you. He can give you rest. He can give you a future. Would you give your life to him tonight?